Hi, welcome back to Index Card of Day 2017 with me, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual. Today it's a twofer, cards 37 and 38. I'm playing with my new Distress Oxides. Really haven't used Distress Inks at all, so this is quite a learning curve. Supplies links can be found in the description box. Don't forget to take the time to subscribe to my channel by hitting the icon in the lower right hand corner. So I start with the gesso card and I have my felt applicators that I put on a thicker piece of cardboard with some velcro from the dollar store. So I have five of the Distress Oxides and a few of the regular Distress Inks which I bought and I honestly haven't used. but with all the interest in the Distress Oxides, I thought I'd give them out and give them another play and try to find a use for them within my mixed media creations. So I want to add some texture and as per usual I go and I grab several stencils, several things that interest me that I think I may use. I'm going to grab my flexible texture paste, modeling paste, and this is a Liquitex brand, and it's what I've used since the very beginning. At the beginning, I, it was a mistake. I didn't even know what the different types were, and this is what I got, and I, and I liked it. So I'm trying to find an interesting pattern on this stencil, and I'm taping it down, and I find that that just gives me a little added assistance in making sure that I don't get the texture paste going under. And I'm applying it with this palette knife. I'm doing it over the entire card and surface, but you could definitely do parts of it. Right now I really don't have an idea of where I want to take this card. The only thing I'm thinking of is I'm going with, you know, kind of blues and teals. I'm thinking underwater, hence the bubbles. So I get out the Distress Inks with the felt applicators and I'm just applying a layer of the different colors and going back and forth till I basically like what I see. This is much the same as any time with the, with the Dilusions paints, you know, you just keep playing and blending as you go. So I have a, using Wilted Violet there to add a little bit of purple interest. This I believe is Evergreen Bow in the regular Distress inks. Faded Jeans I believe I used and the teal one. So I spritz it as I've seen them doing and I can see the oxidization kind of taking place but I tilt the card and I get things to flow. Remember I'm just playing. I don't know what effect I want. I don't know what's even possible here. So I'm just getting used to the products and I think with any new product or anything that you have in your stash that you know it's not working. You need to just try things and see. So here was my idea. I have this little the sea turtle and I thought oh put some bubbles and make it an ocean scene. I've got a little little turtle family here. But the background right now is a little lighter than I want 
And I have a feeling that it has to do with being on the gessoed surface. So I thought, okay, I'm going to just add a little bit more, give it some layers, because that's I hear that, you know, layering it up, and when you add the layers, you know, dab and dry, dab and dry. I'm not sure if Tim Holtz or you know anybody's if it's recommended that you mix the oxides with the distress inks, but I am. Like I said, these are the products that I have. It's my job to make sure that I figure out how to use them. Now I love how this purple looks on here. Just added that little bit of dark, brighter color. The one thing I have used of late, I, I've discovered that the Distress inks work extremely well in helping for when I set up my planner weekly planner spreads, I use a lot of the Distress inks for that. So um, you can check out my planner videos if that's something that you're interested in. And in those videos, I use um, mixed media techniques and the things in my stash <clears throat> instead of buying all the pre-made stickers and stamps and, and things that they sell um, with the planners. So here I'm just adding ink to another ca gessoed card, just mopping up the leftover paint. And I think with the Distress inks, I'm going to have a stash of cards and paper and different things that I can clean up the excess paint. I don't think I want to put this into the um, coffee filters because it will reactivate. Although I may give it a try um, and see where I go from there. I'm just picking up the colors. And this is the beginnings of the second card. So finishing drying this, and a little more blending there. And now with the addition of the purple, it just really turned it not into an under the sea, and no longer envision the sea there. So the sea turtle will have to wait for another day. So I have these stickers that I got at the dollar store. They're fairy stickers and they're absolutely blue, beautiful. They're kind of texturized a little bit. There's some shimmer on them. But what I don't like is they have that white band around them. So I do fussy cut around them to get rid of that white. So I put this girl on here and I like how the colors work together. Looking through my stash, I had these swirls. Now these were the discard pieces um, when I cut a swirl stencil using my Silhouette Cameo. So I kept all the, a lot of those interesting bits and bobs when I've cut out stencils. And, you know, I've just rediscovered them and starting to use them on these iCADs and then, you know, hopefully on pages. Now this is cut out of um, thicker, it's thicker than tag board, and it's slightly metallic. It's absolutely the perfect blue for this, so I didn't have to paint it. If it wasn't, I would have painted it. Now I'm putting gel medium on, and I'm putting it on fairly thickly because one, we have the texture on the card, 
so it's kind of bumpy for it to sit on. And I really want it to make contact. I'm just fussing with the placement of it. Now, because this is distress inks, and distress inks and oxides are water activated, they will reactivate any time you put any, rub any wet medium on them. You need to be careful here. You do not want to brush the gel medium onto your background because you will disturb the background that you have set up. I also don't want the gel medium the matte gel medium on top of the swirl because that has a metallic sheen and because it's matte it would get rid of the metallic part. Deciding maybe what if I turned it upside down? Nope, like it better here. like her the way she sits on this bubble. I'm using some of that purple distress ink to edge it, but it's not quite dark enough for what I want. So I get out the black acrylic paint and I'm going to edge it with that. And again, because it's distress ink and it's water activated or it can be reactivated, you don't want to put wet medium. So to rub the Stabilo on and reactivate that with water, activate that with water would affect how the background looks. Now you can try it and you can see the effect you get and decide if that's something you like, but I want to avoid that. I like the background. I like the interest that I've created. So in my stash, I have all these kind of pre-cut sayings and sentiments that I've printed off. Um, some are on stickers, some are not. Some, like the one I'm holding, is a dollar store purchase. I'm just kind of going through here, trying to find a neutral one that will work. So I found the one Inspire, and this is one of my just sayings that I created my own do-it-yourself kind of chit -chat, chit chat stickers and printed it off onto sticker paper that I bought at the dollar store. I will link you to the video where I talk about how I created these and if you go to my blog which is linked in the description box the all the words are there in a document that you can download, select your own font, and then print off on your own sticker paper and use. There's a lot of very general ones that will fit a multitude of ICADs or smaller size pages or um, ATCs. So in amongst those fairies on that sticker there were some butterflies and it just looked like I needed something up here. So when in doubt put a butterfly. And I'm thinking I'm done. In fact, I, you know, after showing you the close-ups of this, I kind of wave off and say, hey, I'm done. Then I decide I need to add a little more definition. So I grab my a black pen that was sitting here and it just happened to be a Uniball Signo. It's, it's different than the white Uniball Signo, but it writes really well on top of any of the stuff that I have on here. So I outlined the swirls, that was my intent, and then, and then I was going to do just the bigger bubbles. Then you see what happened. I mean, I went crazy with this black pen, but I think it added interest to the page and added some definition. Again, I'm not going to use the Stabilo or a watercolor pencil to shade around the focal image. So um, using this sketchy outlining kind of thing is one way to add definition and pop to your focal point.
So even with the, you know, dollar store purchases, any of your stickers or anything, like they are yours to change up as you see fit. So don't be afraid to change the color with watercolor pencils or whatever, outline it with black pen, you know, it's just the beginning. Just adding a little bit more, more black. This card is is a very soft colors. And again, I think they're softer because I gessoed the surface. Really not a choice because I had like the flashcard part that I want I don't want to see. But I will be playing with the distress inks and the the oxides on non-gessoed surfaces just to see what happens there. So there we have the first card is done. Stay tuned for the second one. So here's the background I created basically by using up the leftover ink and went through my stash of pictures and magazines that I pulled out while I've been doing these iCADs. And you know, I like how the Blue Jay looks on there and I like how um, the flowers look on there. It, it, they work well with the colors that are created. If you struggle with matching your focal point to a background. Some people may love making backgrounds and they never know what to put onto the background. I will link you to my video, um, mixed media technique tag video, where I talk about the ABCs of matching the focal point to the background and vice versa. So just adding a little bit more color here building those layers that you know the oxides are so amazing for I'm somewhat addicted to this purple this and I can't remember what it it's not wilted violet and it's not dusty concord I have those but this is this is more <clears throat> A violet color. I love how that looks. So I'm just playing, picking it up, trying to get, figure out how to touch it to the thing to get the different effects that I may like. Really, it's trial and error. You just have to kind of let go. This is not a precise process. So you have to, it's kind of like the sprays, you kind of have to be okay with it being a little freer and be open to whatever could happen. So I'm just mopping up this paint. I have an, another iCAD here that I've been mopping up paint with with different distress inks it has some yellow on it some on there so just kind of adding more interest to this one I must say that using the oxides and the distress ink you create a very quick, easy, visually interesting background. I hemmed and hawed a lot here thinking, oh, do I need to add something? Do I need to add texture? Do I need to take some some of this off with um, with a baby wipe? Do I, what do I need to do? And I decided that, you know, with the kind of smooshed background and the blended, it's okay as it is. That is enough interest. So I had the quote, every flower must grow through dirt, and I close cut it around because I didn't want the excess white. I 
and I applied that, put that on with gel medium. And I put the gel medium onto the back of whatever I was gluing down because I don't want to disturb that beautiful background. These flowers, I, I love the artist that, that um, took these pictures. He, I believe, takes these pictures with an x-ray machine and he, he has all these fl floral pictures and I've loved them for years and I, I these were calendars and I collected all of them and then when I got into mixed media and art journaling I fussy cut a lot of them and have them in my stash and they're you know simply waiting in the folder waiting for the perfect background to show up I love this quote it, it kind of, you know, speaks to me. Every flower must go through dirt and, you know, kind of the same same kind of sentiment as it into every life, a little rain shall fall and, and stuff. It just, you can have something beautiful, but it speaks to the gardener in me. It speak, I love tulips. Um, my husband and I got married in October. We gave tulip bulbs as our, as our gift to our guests. Just making it a little bit darker, adding a little bit of black. Could have grabbed the black acrylic. But you know what? I'm trying something different. Doing a challenge like in the index card today, it's a great opportunity to try different techniques and try different things. You're working on a very small piece. So here are the close-ups of the finished cards. Both backgrounds are similar colors, but they are different. This one had the bondling paste through the stencil. You can see the lusciousness of the effects that you get with, with the distressings and the oxides. The melding of color. And this one, you know, it's really simple. But it's kind of got that dreamy effect. I could just get lost looking at the background. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you with the next index card.